Hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to XCOM Enemy Within. I'm Peter Moxon, Keeper of the Archives, and last time, um, we basically had a giant hubris test because we had a terror mission on a very strange map that I don't think I've ever seen before, actually. And, um, basically I learned that I really like Squad Sight and maybe shouldn't rush forward halfway through the map with a mech that is designed to stay close to the rest of the squad. And who has a laser weapon instead of a plasma weapon. Whoops. So yeah, uh, we had a support die, a, a kernel level support die. And how's the rest of our injuries? Okay, our assault is the only one that's wounded. At least that's okay. But yeah, so having double mech is not an automatic win. So I want to take this sniper and train him up. I should also probably try to try to train up at least one of these two, if not all three of them. Actually, yeah, we just lost the support. Let's try to train up, uh... Let's go with Saeed, because Annette's one level lower, and they're both supports. That way, Saeed and Hawkins can both get the gift. I think that that's fairly auto. I don't know that, but I assume so. Meanwhile, uh, Ethereal Device... Ethereal, ethereal Device, black, done in one day. Council report in about a week. We're going to get just shy of 300 credits out of that. Thermo and Psionics are on the map, at least. Facilities. And we have one other space remaining, and we can fit the Gallop Chamber there once the Ethereal Device is done. But of course, we need to finish up the Psy Lab and get a Psionic Soldier, or a Psyop, before we can do anything with the Gallop Chamber, so that might be a little bit of a ways off. But given that the Gallop Chamber is basically going into the final bit of the, of the game, we might be nearing the end here. So... We have a bunch of kernels, at least, so I can actually assault the alien capital, or, uh, no, citadel ship, I think it is, fairly easily. I say, evidently not learning from last time. Let's see, for engineering by build, what would we actually want out of this? Okay, we would definitely want an alloy cannon. That's basically our monthly income right there. Right, right, I want to upgrade to Titan. Oh, wow, I almost forgot about Titan armor. Yeah, I want at least, like, three, maybe four of those, and hopefully an Archangel armor. All right. We don't need a ton of those. Like, we need at most three, or I suppose at most four, don't we? Because the mechs come with their own armor. Well, they don't quite come with it. It's the mech suit is the armor. Huh. Yeah, we're good on that. So we want... an alloy cannon... Another particle cannon. Three or four Titan armors and an Archangel armor. Like, that's not nothing. That is actually a fair bit of, of credits to get through that, but it's not insurmount... Uh, it's not uninsurmountable. It's not insurmountable. There we go. <laughs> it is doable. Gallop chamber available for construction. Codename Skylight. Having learned a great deal about the hyperwave beacon and its associated interdimensional signaling capabilities, we believe this newly recovered device confirms our suspicions about this technology and takes it a step further. The Psylink, as it is now being called, appears to provide a direct link to the psionic network used by the aliens for field communications. Although we are treading into an area of highly theoretical science, we believe there is a strong indication that the aliens function under a collective consciousness, a form of social organization akin to a hive mind as seen in various species of insect found on Earth. It wasn't until our first interaction with the ethereal species of alien that we were able to understand the scope of the psionic, of the psionic abilities we had previously been exposed to. Quick note, if the ethereals at least, like, uh, maybe all of them via the network, but at least the ethereals, are working under a hive mind, I wonder if there's essentially an ethereal queen that we're going to meet at some point. Because the way XCOM 2 slash War of the Chosen ends, I'm not going to give it away, but they are pretty clearly setting up for XCOM 3. And we haven't heard any anything about that yet, but assuming that it does continue the same story, maybe that's a thing. Anyway, uh, down, yep. Although we've only scratched the surface in terms of de developing psionic abilities within a human subject, in fact, we haven't done it at all yet, We've now theorized that it may be possible to join the alien's consciousness to tap into their hive mind by successfully activating this device. However, 
In order to ensure the safety of XCOM's headquarters, we'll need to construct a chamber that minimizes the potential risks to the rest of the facility during the activation process. As it so happens, two of our brightest young minds, a team of brothers, have already, have already conceived of just such a facility appropriate to this task. If we manage to locate a soldier with aptitude for psionics and, a, and find a means to develop these abilities further, I believe it will only be a matter of time before we succeed in activating the device and finding the source of this invasion. Oh, I forgot we might need a max level psyop. I totally forgot about that bit. Whoops. Okay. We need Psy armor for it, but that's also a little ways off because we need to tramp a psyop first. So let's go ahead and finish out some of this other stuff. Yeah, it doesn't really matter because it's Firestorm, Firestorm, Armor, Weapon, Plot. Let's do this first. Yeah, it's done! In addition to manufacturing our own light plasma rifles, our soldiers should now be able to use any that they recover from the battlefield. Light plasma rifle available for manufacture. Codename, Corvid. Although we continue to gain a, gain a better understanding of the alien plasma weapons we've recovered with each passing day, adapting this, the technology is but one aspect of the process involved in designing these weapons. We must also ensure that the armaments we develop are suitable for, to the firing position of troops, to the firing positions our troops are accustomed to. If the weapon doesn't conform to human ergonomic standards, our troops certainly won't be able to fire it effectively. As a result of our efforts to reduce the weapon's weight, we've noted we've noted a substantial improvement in overall accuracy of this rifle. In addition to manufacturing these new lightweight plasma rifles, we can also apply this approach to modify any plasma rifles captured in the field. Yay! Ghost armor, because why the hell not? Okay, and our uh, assault is back. Yay! Ghost armor available for manufacturer, codename Nightshade. An advanced prototype based on our earlier skeleton armor design, this variation makes use of our latest developments in the field of optical camouflage. By studying the unusual phasing behavior exhibited by the hyperwave beacon, what? What phasing behavior? I would have expected that to be the Seekers, if anything. Eh, whatever. We've come to understand how this device is capable of existing outside of our visible plane. With this phasing behavior in mind, we've implemented several experimental metamaterials into the weave and structure of this suit's outermost layers. As a result, the Ghost Armor provides near invisibility to the wearer, allowing for enhanced evasion and infiltration capabilities in the field. I actually kind of want to read this. By integrating a stealth field based on the favorite... Only effective when used by a soldier in cover. I'm interested in... I'll give him that much. Well, let's do this and then do the EMP cannon, I guess. And there's that done. Plasma cannon available for manufacturer, codename Snapdragon. We, as we've continually strived to even the odds for our pilots facing the alien craft in combat, one of our most important developments was the reverse engineering of their plasma-based weaponry. Having successfully created a variant for our troops on the ground, the most difficult part of our work was already done. Increasing the size and firepower of these weapons for an application suitable to our interceptors was a relatively straightforward process. Once we confirmed that the ship itself could handle the stress associated with firing these weapons, it was simply a matter of scaling up the device and creating an appropriate mount. We believe the plasma cannon is now ready for general, for general fabrication and engineering, and I'm confident our pilots will appreciate the additional firepower it provides. Yay! Time to never, time to never use it. The only one that takes more than one day, or two days I suppose, at this point. Let's see. Zero available, five of eight, so we can't get more income from this at the moment. That's just finances. No requests at the moment. I have half a mind to sell damn near everything. Oh, wait, wait. We have we need Archangel. To start on the housing for this Shut up. As soon as possible. Considering what we went through to get it, we should be making every effort to provide a secure location for its storage. Oh my god, we don't need UFO power supplies or flight computers. Hold on. If I were to go insane, how much could I get? Oh, hi there, heavy, heavy floater corpses. And drones. Keep you two around just because... Oh, God. Uh, go ahead, I guess. Now that we've got the firepower to match, I think we can take them. 
Okay, if I were to sell damn near literally everything, aside from Illyrium and Alloys and Weapon Fragments, I can get about 800 credits. I currently want one of these, 250, one of these, 272, so that's about 500, 520. I can't get these yet, actually. I need to wait for the monthly tick over at least, and that's actually not... The monthly tick over isn't quite enough either. Huh. Probably one of these, so we were at 520. So that's about 720, let's call it. And then, like, three of these. So that's around 1,100 credits or so, maybe 1,200, just to round it up a little bit. Uh, okay. Cool. Not doing that anytime soon, then. Just want to make sure I'm not skipping over anything. Okay. Uh, all right, all right. Foundry's the other one I want to check. Okay, let's take a quick stock of what uh, possible uh, projects. Yeah, Foundry projects that I, want, I, I would like to do. Don't care. Don't care. Could be nice. Weapon fragments are an issue, though. At this point, probably not. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Uh, maybe. Advanced construction. What are you? We don't have enough sectopod wrecks, actually. Ah, accelerated vehicle and facility construction. Eh, whatever. Pistols or whatever at this point. Stealth satellites, whatever. Scope upgrade, jelly delirium, silver, silver motor, shaped armor, sensible drone. See, that's health for mechs, and that's mobility for mechs. Those could be good, but at 300 credits, I think I'd rather just build up my weapons and armor instead. Incoming transmission. Okay. I don't think I fucked anything up this month. In fact, I don't think I even let any, any UFOs go by or anything. We are extremely impressed with the progress of the XCOM project thus far, Commander. Your recent results were beyond our expectations. And that is not a statement this council makes lightly. Okay. Solid month. Got about 300 credits. We will be in touch, Commander. Okay. First things first. Let's get two weapons. Start with the particle cannon. Oop. And now, how much do we need for the alloy cannon? Like 160 or something like that? Go to the foundry. What needs flight computers or power supplies. Okay, you need flight computers, but it's also stealth satellites. I don't care. This feels so weird, but I feel like I actually can do this. Let's sell these down to five and see what we can get off of that. You... Drones. 189 right there. Okay, that's enough to get the weapon at least. Alloy cannon, go ahead. Okay, so we would like... Oh, we do have 40... Oh, we have exactly 40 engineers. Okay. You know what? I'm going to look this up on the wiki right now. What does the ghost armor actually do? XCOM enemy within ghost armor. Because I want to check what kind of uh, defense it gives. Game description, specifications, cost, tactical info. Health bonus, six. It's technically medium armor. Stealth system allows the, use the wearer to become invisible, although the tooltip said that that only allows for uh, when you're in cover. Ghost mode can be activated up to four times per battle, so I guess that might be five if it's a support, because of the plus one uses. Activating ghost mode does not cost an action, nor end the soldier's turn. Ooh, interesting. Provides moderate plus 20 bonus to defense, equivalent of partial cover. Uh, movement speed is increased by three. Grappling hook module has been adapted from the skeleton suit. Uh, enemy within amends this with. Ooh, it allows for uh, the um, uh, Titan armor, poison, and fire interruption stuff. 
actually uh, maybe not maybe not fire because it, the wiki here specifically says immunity to poison and airway interruption so you can ignore seekers i guess and poison oh no flame resistance right below that so yes flame resistance as well so ghost does as much as titan but with less health bonus okay Okay, uh, I got the gist fit, so let me go back over to my default. There we go. Back here so we have some music back. Okay, so what I'm currently thinking is one Titan to give heavy mech, mech, heavy sniper assault. Maybe put one mech away to take uh, a support. I'm basically thinking that support and heavy can get ghost armor, uh, and assault gets titan armor, sniper gets archangel. God, ghost armor t just costs so much more. You know what? Here. Oh, not that. That. Save here. How much am I going to regret this? I have the weapons that I want. Not finances, gray market. It's 250 for a single ghost armor, which basically gets two of the other armors. Okay, that basically gets me two ghost armors. And maybe enough for, like, one more, kind of. Uh, that's about 150-ish. Basically two Ghost and one Archangel, possibly. This is so incredibly dumb. Hold on, before I actually screw myself over. Foundry, Advanced Flight was one of the few that I was actually considering. Okay, so Advanced Flight takes two Heavy Floater, two Drone, two Cyber Disc. Keep that in mind. Basically, I'm planning forward to next month if I get another monthly tick over, then I'm going to get another, like, 250 or whatever, and I'm going to have some other corpses that I can sell at that point. So, two Heavy Floater, two Drone, two Cyber Disc, and Advanced Servo Motors was the other one, which doesn't take any. Shaped Armor doesn't take any. Okay. So realistically, with the things I'm actually considering, four Thin Men, let's keep this as well in mind. So four Thin Men, two Heavy Floater, two Drone, two Cyber Disc. I'm going to not talk for a little bit, just so I can try to keep that in mind. Okay, I think that that's accurate. That's about as much money as I can get. Now, there's just something that's telling me that Ghost Armor isn't actually going to be as useful as I want it to be. But it's so... Oh my god, I don't have enough Illyrium. Okay. One Ghost Armor. I actually ran out of Illyrium. It's been so long. Okay, we got a little bit of money left to play with to build the Gallop Chamber or such. Online. 20 credit rebate. That's the thermo, so we now have power. There's the EMP cannon. EMP cannon available for manufacturer, shiv repair available in the foundry. Code name Ion. In developing an electromagnetic weapon capable of emitting a focused pulse that will penetrate the alien's advanced shielding, we've also had to find a means to protect our own ship's sensitive electronic circuitry. The functionality of the weapon itself has already had already been well established by previous testing conducted by Earth's various terrestrial military forces, leaving us with little to determine outside of the energy requirements and effective range. Although the additional shielding required to protect our systems will necessitate a reconfiguration of our ship's hard points for the weapon's mount, I suspect the engineering team will have no trouble fitting the device into position. If our, pirate, if our pilots can successfully deploy the pulse against the alien craft, we should be able to bring down a UFO with minimal damage to the artifacts and equipment carried inside. 
yeah, so that's basically the main reason to do this instead of the fusion lance, is that it requires you to get a lot closer. Like, we're at range 3 at, at long range. We need to be at range 1 at close range, I think, in order to use it. But if we use it, we take down the ship probably in one shot, I suspect, and nothing on the ship is broken. It'd be a lot more useful a lot earlier in the game. Oh god, we need... <laughs> I so didn't think about that as an issue that it just completely blindsided me. Okay, when we get more Illyrium, like literally three more Illyrium, I think, Psy Armor is going to be the first order of business, I then the armor is. To support the research team, Commander. I've already put the new recruits to work in the lab. Actually, since we have the Gallop Chamber available, uh, facilities... We need 10 Illyrium and 200 credits. Wow, okay. It is hilarious to me that we ran out of Illyrium that we ran out of Illyrium. One hundred and ninety credits for four flashbangs. That might be worth. It also might take corpses. Whoops. Independent Independent defense contractors operating inside the United Kingdom have reached out in hopes of bartering for a shipment of our flashbang grenades. They've been repeatedly pinned down by alien suppression fire and are hoping these grenades will improve their odds of survival. If we provide the equipment they've asked for, they're willing to make a significant donation to XCOM. Can I make those? Flashbang, yes! It needs four, which is going to be about 80 credits, and we get 160 or whatever out of it. Hell yeah. Quests. 190, better. Huzzah, we have 300 credits. If only we could buy Illyrium. Actually, legit, is there anything that I want that just costs money, then? It's like, we have these. Come on. Railgun, medkit, orc thrower, scope. Yeah, like, now some of this makes some more sense. You know what, sure. Let's finally get around to making some Reaper rounds so I can give that to an Assault or something. Might as well test out the Mimic Beacon. Now, stay there for now because the Gallop Chamber is 200 and the armor is like 1 or 150 each. Oh my god, we got two Illyria! Oh god damn, we were at seven, weren't we? Oh! <laughs> hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Illyrium nine. Oh, we need ten for a lot of what we're doing. I think we need eight for some of the armor. Yeah, we need eight Illyrium for a Titan armor. I really shouldn't. I should focus on the Galb Chamber first. But Titan armor... Actually, yeah, if we're taking two mechs, then Ghost, Archangel, and Titan is, is a total of five armor, uh, five tier three armors taken care of. This is so dumb. This is almost certainly not the right thing to do because our next mission is not guaranteed to give us ten Illyrium. It's just likely to give us some Illyrium, hopefully. I'm just having fun with this at this point, honestly. We have literally nothing going on. Right, because our research, we need Illyrium. Uh, our, our facilities, we need Illyrium. Okay, I guess everyone's just uh, on standby for a bit. Contact detected. Oh, thank God. And it's a... Unknown size? I thought it normally gave size, huh? But it's a supply barge, which is really good, actually. Supply barge is exactly what we want, because that's what gets us a ton of resources. AKA, at least like 20 Illyrium. Probably more like 80. So, objective, harvest live specimens. I would love to know how the hyperwave relay knows that one. Crew size 19. Big crew. Ethereal. Muton Elite, Mectoid, Sectoid, Chrysalid, Sectopod, Drone. Like, I, I could try to break down each pod here, but realistically, it's just a lot. That's like five or six pods. 
it's possible there's going to be multiple sectopods at that point. Okay. That. That. Salt. Second heavy. Support. Sniper. Because I want to have the sniper, and I like having the double heavy. So I guess our second mech is going to essentially be our backup mech. As weird as that is to say. Make items available. That probably makes the mech suit come off, actually. Eh, whatever. Load out. It can be a powerful feeling to the air without a tether. Just keep a close eye on your power levels. This suit isn't meant for long distance travel. Where's the scope? Oh, the scope's probably on Zhang or whatever. Yeah, okay. In that case, let's give you back your grenades. Or your double mimic beacon. I'm willing to give that a test run. Scope for... You're a lieutenant, that's why. I was trying to figure out why your aim was so dog shit for a sniper there for a moment. Uh, let's not give you alien grenades quite yet. I'll switch those, I'll switch those out as necessary. Support, loadout. You take Ghost. The troops should have no trouble handling recon duty as long as they're equipped with this suit. It's as close as we've come to true invisibility. Yeah, we want the assault to have Titan armor. So it's basically do we put the ghost on you or Zhang is pretty much the main two options. Deal with that in just a moment. You. Now let's go over to Assault first, because Assault gets Titan armor. With the added structural support this suit provides, I expect the troops will take full advantage of the added firepower they can carry around. They'll also be much less susceptible to environmental hazards like fire while wearing it. Still have no idea how the hell their face is safe, but whatever. Wait, you... Conventional weapons only? I want to test this really quickly. If I go to this... Oh! That is a fascinating balancing option. Huh. I mean, that just means I'm never going to use that, or never going to use the Reaper rounds, but good to know, I guess. Okay, good and good. Get prepare servo, so that's the right one. Just making sure there's nothing else I want to give them. Therapist and Skeleton. Yeah, I think I do want to give Ghost the support because I have a bad habit, admittedly, of sending the support out too far. And at this point, being able to send the support out far into cover, accidentally trigger a pod, support goes invisible, might actually be a good idea, especially with Zhang on backup with the Mimic Beacon. I'm not sure that's the best option, but I've also just never used Ghost, at least not in this campaign or the previous one, so I'm kind of playing around with my options. Archangel, Ghost, Titan, Spider, Spider, Level 3 Mech, Plasma, 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 Plasma. One slot for an alien grenade. Let's see if we still got that. We do. Okay. I think it's the best we got then. Let's go ahead. Dropship has arrived. Brazilian authorities have requested our help. So that's where we're going next. We tracked the alien craft to a landing site in a rural area outside of a small town. We should move to secure the site and clear out any hostiles we can find. Oh, that's the use of the upgraded arc thrower I didn't realize. Oh well. 
Also, I do need to keep in mind that it is still useful to get meld, because I haven't really done a lot with gene mods, but I now should have basically all of the gene mods unlocked, and so can upgrade my non-mech soldiers. That's probably worth a good amount at this point. And especially once I run out of stuff to buy, that's going to be the main credit sink, I suspect. Granted, once I run out of stuff to buy, when I have, like, 500 credits of, of stuff still left, but that's a contemplation for later. Starting Operation Unceasing Savior. Boop, boop. Down the ship. This is Big Sky. We're in position near the enemy LZ. Down the ship. Is ready to move on your orders. I read you, Big Sky. This was a landing, not a crash. So expect heavy resistance. Okay, so that's how it goes. Realistically, we're just going through here and clearing it out as we go. The less stuff we blow up, technically, the better, but I'm not going to be too careful because, let's be real, we're in the end game. It doesn't actually matter that much. Moving out. Also, I don't think we have this. We've had this map yet because this does not look familiar as an entrance. Heading to that location. It's as far as anyone's going to go, so we should be safe. Solid copy. Moving to position. You up copy. here. For now, let's just move the sniper over to here. Uh, that's probably blocked off, isn't it? Yeah. Let's move you then move. to there. Okay, the one up, the one extra square did not fuck me over. Good. Time to bonus. There. You up two squares or something. And get a couple more watches. Just that everyone's in line with each other at least close enough. And it's probably a sector pod. I could theoretically jet boop up here. I'm gen I generally don't know how useful it'd be to jet boop here. You have 120 aim, I'm not gonna be too upset about that. You, however, have a grappling hook. Grapple out. Okay, how useful is that? Not at all at this point, because there's no way to look inside. There is a ladder, so you are supposed to be able to get up here at least. So this is moving him way out of position. It's totally not a good idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. There now. Yeah, because I figured the vision was not going to be uh, in favor of seeing below here where there might be more enemies. I'm assuming there's at least a pod in here. Let's move you to I'm here. On, Wait a minute. That's a power supply and a computer. Is this the command room? Oh my god, it is. This is the ship that we always saw from the other side. Like, uh, a couple of missions ago, we came out from this angle. And then, uh, here's where we have the supply rooms, and then it goes really dark, so I can't show you anything. Okay, there is almost all... In fact, there is just always a pod inside of this room. So let's go ahead and prepare both sides on this. Because if we block off two of the doors, there's a good chance that we're able to just get the drop on them. I was fairly certain that wasn't going to get any reveals. That's affirmative. Double time. Two on either door. Sniper is unfortunately going to just have to split. Dip, 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 is unfortunately is unfortunately just going to have to kind of split the difference. Scanning. Over to pistol. Overwatch. I eyes on the prize. Hi. By all means, come over here. Ah, uh, you, you overwatched. Okay, sectoid went down. Wait, what am I doing? <laughs> I can just do this. 50% after running gun, so might as well. Okay, okay, okay. Breathe. Calm down. If you go here, you reveal over here. It's possible that that is fine. It is not guaranteed. 
because this blocks the entire view over here, I think it's safe enough. But this could go poorly. So let's go on this side instead so that we have full cover against this angle. And that then lets us collect the meld and then get a rapid fire shot with 50% or with plus 50% crit due to the uh, max level assault. Hey, hey, watch the ship, dude. I'm trying to keep that intact. Okay. I thought it well. It just wasn't actually that useful. 20% chance to crit because inherent minus 30% due to the mectoid, I think. Oh, well, good enough. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Was that a 98% that just missed? I am on it. Screw it, just do it this way. Oh, I have Mimic Beacons now. Yay. I suppose doing Zang first would have made it so that the Rapid Fire was guaranteed, but whatever. It's Sniper. That was a beautiful hit, too. Like, like that was center of mass. Hi, Chrysalids. Okay, so we've used U3. Start with this. We have the Arc Thor, which is not useful against them. They're Chrysalids, they don't use cover, so don't bother with uh, staying on the corner. Ghost could be interesting, actually, uh, but... Ooh, wait a moment. You do five because you don't have the upgrade. Stunning organic enemies might not be the worst here, actually. Honestly, two grenades here seems like the best in order to make sure the chrysalids don't do anything. Because if I move you to get a uh, vision of them, then I can only shoot once. You can shoot once. You can shoot once. That it is likely enough to get a kill that I'm almost willing to risk it. Hmm. We technically have a sectoid active for what little difference that makes. I'm mainly worried about the support damage here, so let's go ahead and try to get a kill here. Up to 8 damage, would get a kill, 0% chance of a crit. No longer a threat. Okay. Got let's move you. Okay, at that point, I'm willing to just use the mech. Oh, also there's you. I completely forgot about that. Position confirmed. And before we use the mech, you're only a 72 because you're too close. Let's try to get the kill, though, just to get you experience. Okay, good. I'm just trying to absolutely power level him. You over here just so we have good angle on this side. And now the sectoid. What was that noise? I mean, that one's a uh, sectopod. The other one sounded maybe like a chrysalid. Eh. Okay. Now how are we going to approach this one? be great if we kept vision down middle so that you have good line of sight. Let's start by just blue moving you up here and see where that gets us. Granted, anything on like this side of this corridor is able to flank us, but we also have significant height elevation in that case. Good to go. Okay, nothing there. Let's toggle flight. 
and get as far over here as possible. Okay, I'm not totally sure that's where I clicked, but whatever, I'll take it. Okay. Take something close to a setup turn here. Like, don't get much vision, just kind of get people prepared. Like, you come up here. Blaster launcher should be able to get any angle that we want. Watching for activity. Oh, that corner got destroyed. Damn. Take the admittedly flanked half cover, just that you're are in this area. Eyes on the prize. Come get some. Then you move up to here, just so you're in the same general region. I'm on it. Okay. Did you hear that? No, actually. Okay. Assault has no restriction on, uh, on on shooting before first move, so just do this. Good, li good lightning reflexes. And there's a mectoid. Mectoid on Overwatch. As expected, basically no one has vision. A little bit worried about the vision down there. I think that this is a case where we can have a good use of a grenade to get vision. You do not have a grenade. That looks like it will destroy the wall, so let's try it. That's the superpower one as well. I collected it already. Who cares? That counts as full. Let's see if anyone else. Have I actually gotten a sector? Whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> You have no vision. In that case, go here. See if you can get see if you can get a kill with the pistol. You have no vision. Hi, Sectoid. Just start with this. Any chance that destroyed the wall? Because it looks like it might have. It did! I'd love to keep the high ground, but it's just not... Oh, come on. It's just not optically viable for, for maintaining vision. 70. Good. You know what? You're not going to use these for anything else. You. Die. Oh, I saw those as not being destroyed. Now, yeah, whatever. Eyes peeled, I've got my eyes on. Okay, now we have a bit of an interesting thing to, to deal with, because upper elevation here is really good, but really restrictive. Going around has better vision, but. We just can't use the upper area at all at that point, I think. I say elevation is close to king in this game. It is just so good. Okay, another mectoid. Just realized I haven't been keeping track of, your, of our enemies yet. Oh, wow. Well. Hundred on you just for straight damage. Good 
damage. Eighty four on you, not likely to get the kill, so let's try to get damage with someone else at least. Is it useful? Could get vision into here, which would actually be like anti useful. Where's your blue move? Up to here. Try that, see if you can get vision. Good. 80%, go ahead. Good. Sniper on rifle. 84. Had to miss one eventually. I am moving. 90. Okay, we currently still have an active sectoid, but that's not really worth anything. Like, was a sectoid gonna kill us? I shouldn't joke around. This is a game where that absolutely could happen. Could was the operative word there. Hi, Chrysalids. Got something over here. Hi. Where are you? <laughs> Hold on. Okay. I think I know how to handle that. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Hoorah! Get a shot off. Get a kill. Reload you just so you have plenty of ammo. You know what? Just kind of take a round of reloads this turn. Three, six, seven, eight at the beginning, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We should have six enemies left, I think. Let's move the assault first. Heading there now. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I think we found the enemies. Oh. Please. I'm gonna have fun with this. That's a drone. Ah, oh, god damn it. Okay, you can at least get drone, sectoid, or sec sectopod, drone. Okay, you can at least hit the sectopod then. Damn. Okay, fuck everything over there. We need to get damage out. Nine and shredded. Good. 70 with hollow. Oh yeah, he doesn't have bolts for him because he has hollow targeting. Duh. Looks like you don't get a kill on either. Disabling... Huh. Main weapon. Sectopods might have secondary weapons, not totally sure. Okay. Really? Oh, fine. I'm increasingly worried about my damage output here. You don't have direct damage grenades. You do.
Run and gun. To here for half cover. Rapid fire. Against you to get the kill. Ah. Granted, it was a coin flip, but it was a coin flip. I was really hoping it would go my way. I would go that it would go my way. It's us two or you by the looks of it, so cover you more. Smoke's in the air. I also could have uh, ghosted with you, I just realized. Whoops. I haven't internalized that yet. Go for the headshot. Try to get the kill. Or you could miss. Okay, not a fantastic turn, but we got solid damage on both of them. This is just a game where it's much preferable to get a, to, to get a full kill instead. Okay, Overwatch instead of Meld, that's really good. Shooting our Heavy. Wow, that finally hit something. Prepping Micrometeors. Nope. Also said micrometer, I meant micro missile. Yeah, I don't particularly care about the meld right now. All targeting with heat ammo. With damage. Please get the kill. Good. And just the absolute no-sell of killing a sectopod, apparently. I'm on the move. Yep, there's that. Hopefully the mech toy didn't overwatch as well. That actually kind of suck. Sorry, what? Here. Just try to get a kill on... Okay, good. As usual, I went for Rapid Fire just to get the slightly better odds of actually getting the kill. Heading out. Give up the high ground just so we can try to get better vision and, you know, generally get the kill. Yes, Over commander. here, I guess. You know, sure. Let's ghost to just see what happens. This works. And Overwatch. I've got my eyes on. So I think that should protect our our support there from getting attacked at least. Up, up and, away. and Overwatch. Covering now. There you are. There you aren't. I think that's it. I was wrong. Okay. Position confirmed. Move the sniper up. You can fly. Now, oh, damn it. <laughs> I'll get used to it eventually. Heading there now. Blue move on this Position elevation confirmed. so we can still Overwatch. Heading to that location. Over here, and then ghost if we don't see anything, because assumedly we won't. Go ahead and ghost just that we don't get shot. I have it covered. Come get some. Come get some. Now, good practice is probably to not overwatch with the ghost unit because that will break ghost. I think. I kind of trust there was nothing right in that corridor. Running. Now having him out on his own is probably not a good idea. Because he is our injured unit. Okay. Light. Go. Touching down. God damn it. 
God. Is that on top? It's actually too high, admittedly. Oh well, I'm getting used to the ghost armor again. Stepping off. I sure if it revealed like over here or something, I'd probably save scum back a turn. Affirmative. Covering now. Please walk through the door so I know where you are. I know where you are, kind of. Okay, let's assume the sniper is going to be useless here because this just this just going to be really annoying to figure out. It's just uh, there. Open with this. There was an ethereal. Oh, I just remember that as I opened the door. <laughs> Well, down that goes. You know what? Now seems like a fantastic time to do this. There. So if I understand correctly, that should draw their attention for a turn. So they're both outside the door. Reload. Over here, so you have good uh, sight on that corridor. Overwatch. Okay, Ghost Armor, I kind of want you to work with me here. Yeah, I knew that was going to be a bit misaligned. Oh, well. Put you here, because you're just our best brute unit. Please work the way I think. Okay, ethereal. Shit. With 120 aim and no Overwatch restriction, that has to be decently unlikely. Can you still mind control? Mind controlling our sniper isn't the worst, honestly. Okay. And the elite, there you are. Okay, welcome back to the room. I can deal with this. Okay, 10 damage. Reactive sensor is good. So the Mimic Beacon did not do its job very well. That being said, one of the units mind controls instead of attacks, so that might have been a, a factor. Okay. We're gonna start with this. Just go here. Rapid fire. The Ethereal. Uh, that looked like it reflected. We took three damage. Okay, I can deal I can deal with that. It reflected one of the shots by the looks of it. Let's see, this is Zhang, so that's our hollow target, not our bullet swarm. You can't see shit, so time for a rocket. Uh rocket is our last resort thing, because that destroys a decent amount of stuff. 50% with a crit. Good. Enemy destroyed. We should be able to fire twice due to our abilities. Uh, four damage to both of them, I guess. I just realized that I only ever had to deal with, like, the one ethereal last time. Like, in, uh, Enemy Unknown. Actually, no, they, they might have buffed the ethereals if they do damage, because we do have to fight a couple of ethereals. Maybe. Oh, I got one of them out, no one died. Got mind controlled, still dealt with it decently. 
I mean, it was long and kind of tedious to get through, but I handled that okay. Okay, Zhang wounded for eight days. That's fair. Uh, Omega not wounded at all. That's nice. So she can take ten damage and not get wounded. Good. Our sniper not getting a promotion kind of stings. I really tried to feed him kills there, but whatever. Eight sectoid corpses, one mutant elite corpse, one ethereal corpse, six chrysalid corpses, one sectopod wreck, two drone wrecks, 142 Illyrium. As a reminder, we needed like, what, 50 total or something? 200, 263 alloys, 30 weapon fragments, 30 meld, 5 alien stasis tanks, 2 UFO flight computers, 2 alien surgeries, 3 UFO power sources, 3 alien stasis tank damaged, 2 UFO flight computer damaged, 1 UFO power source damaged, and 4 mectoid cores. God, supply barges have a lot. I actually think the game might have saw that I had basically no inventory remaining and gave me something that would give me a lot of inventory. Like, I, I can't prove that that is within the game logic, but that's a real generous mission to give us when I just sold all of our possible gray market funds. Anyway, that's it for the mission and thus the episode. So, if this video hasn't ruined your life, then go ahead and do all that YouTube stuff you've a million times. I hope you have a wonderful end of your day, and I hope to see you in the next one where we will immediately spend all of our money and, and as much of our Illyrium as possible, and try to get Gallop Chamber going, maybe get like a second Ghost Armor or something. I'm kind of undecided, but... I'm going to be poor, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but anyway, see you in the next one. Bye.